Well, good morning. I'm here with Slim today, and he's going to tell us about how he restored the barn here at McCoy Farm and Gardens. Good morning. I'm, uh, I'm Slim, and my better half is Nancy. And between the both of us, we've, uh, we've restored the barn because I, I've been here on the mountain uh, working on the barn since June. And, uh, and she's been at home taking care of the farm while I've been here. And that's, uh, I just couldn't have done it without her. And, and it's been a combination between us. Uh, Earl had uh, contacted me. So I told them that uh, I'd come and look at the barn and tell them what they need to do to it. So me and my wife made a day trip and they, they gave us a picnic, Earl and Melissa and Charles and Dave, we had a picnic here and we looked at the barn and uh, I fell in love with the barn. I told them I just have to pray about it. So me and my wife went, we prayed about it. We figured that God sent us here and that was, there are no coincidences in life. And everything happens for a reason and that's how we got to Signal Mountain and Walden to McCoy Farm and Gardens and uh, I just fell in love with the barn. So uh, to start with, uh, the barn was in bad shape. It was uh, it was fixing to fall down. Charles and Dave had put some guide wires up in the barn and they put some bracing up in the barn. And that's what kept the barn from falling, actually. Uh, if it hadn't been for that, the barn would have failed. On the right side of the barn, it had done dropped 14 inches and we done separated from the barn itself and the plates about eight inches. And so the barn had to be jacked up. The barn was built with seals under it and all the seals were rotten. When I uh, rebuilt the barn, I poured concrete piers. And they're two foot deep in the ground, four inches above the ground. And we used all, uh, all the, all the boards, when I jacked the barn up, all the boards were too short to put back on the barn. So we had to improvise. And so I, I'd cut some honey locust trees from home and brought them and used them for the post on the right side of the barn. And a couple sassafras poles also. This right here is the tractor shed. Th yeah, this whole side here was, was jacked up 14 inches. Uh, all of this was falling down. All of these were hanging. There wasn't nothing holding them. All these notches you see here were, we, there was nothing. It was just hanging down about to here. And this whole wall was just barely hanging on by a thread. It was fixing to fall. So we jacked this side up 14 inches. We put these, these are new posts, but I tried to keep them old looking to where they're they're more uh, in the time period of, of how the barn was actually built. It was built in, I figured it was built in 1890. It's, uh, it's all hand forged nails that was used and they were made more than likely right over here in the blacksmith shop. Uh, I imagine they built the, the blacksmith shop first and then, uh, and that way they had everything they needed to build the, the big barn. All the wood on this side of the barn is actually wood from the other side of the barn <laughs> because the wood from this side of the barn wasn't long enough. Yeah. So I had to use wood from the other side of the barn, which it was also jacked up about eight inches. Yeah. The original windows were rotted and uh, I looked everywhere for replacement windows and I just couldn't find them. There was none to be found. So I had a friend at home who, uh, him and his wife, built these windows and made them for me. Yeah. And they donated them to the, to the farm for the barn. Back here is something real neat. Two doors right here. And they were actually covered up by, there's a, there's a bunch of gates right here. 
and all these gates were stacked up against this wall right here. They had a they had a two by four nailed across the wall. You can see the the line of yeah. where the two by four was, and they had the doors were nailed shut, and nobody even knew there were doors here. I, I kept noticing the hinges on the wall. And so I knew there were doors. There, there was something here, and I just had to had to tear into it and see what it was. Well, there's, this was the feed room right here, and there's two doors to the feed room. And both of them work. Both of them open, and now it's used for a storage room. There's a bunch of stuff in there, but it needs to be gone through and and sort it out. These latches, like this latch is a unique latch. It was an original latch with the barn. And you just don't see them like that. But, but there was two doors and, and that middle section stayed closed. And those right there are the hog troughs that I put in and that's how I jacked the barn up and, and pulled it in. Yeah. So it's uh it was all raised up, and and then the whole barn was pulled in, and I rebuilt all this and uh, supported it. You poured these? Yes, ma'am. Right here. Okay. Yeah, I poured all them. Like I say, they're they're two at least two foot deep in the ground, all up. And these are like this here is a honey locust post, and that one there is a sassafras post, and then the next one's a honey locust post, and then and then a sassafras post. And these are all native trees uh, in Tennessee. In Tennessee trees. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. But this is something that uh, nobody knew was even here. Now, these braces here, there was all two by four braces up there. I thought, I thought they were undersized. So I had some sassafras beans left that was four by sixes and and I made the braces out of the, uh, the sassafras. Yeah, yeah, they just a lot, it's a lot better built. Here we are at the back again. We fixed the, the back sliding door. It actually slides now and moves. And there was no door up here, up at the loft. And me and Alan built a new door and we hung it. That's it awesome. It turned out pretty good. It still acts a little paint. And this is Alan here. And this is Alan. He's uh, He's been glazing all our windows, <laughs> putting all our glass in all our windows, and just doing a fantastic job. We appreciate that. And he's a he's an awesome glazer. <laughs> uh, if anybody needs some windows glaze, see Alan. He's good. <laughs> this is uh, Miss Murphy, the milk cow stall. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I found the, the stool up above the, this stall in the ceiling when I was cleaning it out and it lacked a leg, so I made a leg for awesome. it. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, I, I acquired the old milk can and I, I just felt it, uh, it needed to go in here in the milk stall. Mm -hmm. And then I rebuilt all the boxes and all the hay racks and trying to make it as authentic as possible. Absolutely. Uh, also, uh, I fixed all the window doors and to where they open and close now, and the, they've all got latches on them. There's so much history and character here that it's just unique. I had this old handle, and so I put it on there, and it's got neat latches. Absolutely. This wall here, this whole wall was raised up eight inches. Uh, it had fallen down and, and was in real bad shape. The seals were rotten in it. I was able to salvage one seal out of, it, out of this whole side, and I used it when I replaced the seals in the hall of the barn. I needed a seal that was uh, 12 foot and a half inch long, and we came around here and measured the seal that, was, that we took out, and it was 12 foot and 3 eighths inches long. So uh, it worked out perfect. It was Perfectly. an eighth inch shy, and we was able to fudge an eighth of an inch. <laughs> and 
I come around here and I said, I think that's going to work. And we measured it and it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, all these boards here were, were weather boards. I've got a friend who runs a sawmill and these, these particular boards here, they were already weathered. And, They're beautiful. Uh, so Before they were painted, it showed the different types of wood. Right. What They're, kind of wood was it? They're poplar and sassafras. Okay. And there's a couple of white oak boards in there also. Yeah. Most of them are poplar and sassafras. Well, now, tell me about what Nancy did on the color. All right. Well, I, I took some boards home to Nancy and left them for her. I took some of the the cutoffs from the old boards and I took some cutoffs from this wall where I put the, the boards up. I took them home and she experimented with the paint and the application of how to how to put it on and get the look we were looking for. I, I think and, it's just perfect. I, this is what we come up with. Yeah. And, it ends up looking weathered and washed and it's yeah. just... And yeah, when you look from the corner like here and you can see both sides and yeah kinda, you know we wanted it to blend to where it didn't that's beautiful one, one side didn't stand out more than the other we just kind of wanted it to flow i love it one thing i noticed i know you know all about is that the boards at the upper part of the barn are so much wider why is that well they just had big logs back in 1890 when they built the barn there was you gotta look, it was mature timber and virgin timber that hadn't been cut. So, Isn't that amazing? So they, and here it is. Yeah, there's some boards that's 20 inches wide. Wow. Now, that's just a big log is what it is, and that's what they cut it off of. And, and they hand cut on this wood. There's an old sawmill that's upstairs in the, in the loft, the old saw. And then the belts around here in the machine shop. Wow. But the actual saw that they used is still here in the yeah. barn. The barn's got a new roof on it. It had, uh, it had 18,000 pounds of weight on the roof. Well, I, uh, I took it off with, uh, one, just one shingle at a time. Yeah. There was uh, four layers of shingles, asphalt shingles on this side and a layer of cedar shake shingles, and then uh, lads on underneath all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And all that, and the lads was rotten. The roof had been leaking for years, so everything was just rotten and it needed to be replaced. All the lower section rafters had been replaced, and all the lads had been replaced on the barn. Yeah. And all this, I, I hung this gate, and, and uh, Made a latch. Awesome. Yeah, this was a machine shop here. Nancy had signs made to where they identify everything in the barn. That way someone can, who doesn't know the barn can can actually uh, walk around the barn and, and look and see what, what each room was. Right. And all this lumber here, all the lads and all of the the two by fours that's in this entire barn that I used, and it was several hundred. Goodness. Uh, came from Mud, Rudd Montgomery with uh, push hard lumber. Right. Uh, that's here on the mountain. And so that was nice. He, uh, he he really went out of his way to to make sure we had you know just what we needed. And if I run short, which I did a bunch, I'd run out of two by fours and need some more. And I could call Rudd up, and uh, in a day or two, he'd have me some more cut. So, yeah, local people, and uh, he's come to look at the barn a few times, and we just made it work. And we've had so much help from from everybody mm -hmm. uh, that come to the to the to the farm. This is the main hall of the barn. And I name all the barns that we do. But this barn here, uh, I, I seen it fitting to name it Miss Elizabeth because it's because Miss Elizabeth is the reason that there is a McCoy Farm and Gardens. It's just an honor 
for, for me to, just a way I can honor Miss Elizabeth Akins. And uh, she's just a special lady, and she's done a lot for this farm. And and uh, so this is the fitness way I know to honor her. That's awesome. She was a uh, mayor of yeah. Walden. Yeah. So this is a tap room here, and we were... We've rebuilt it. I still got a couple of things to do to the floor in here and fixing a couple boards on the floor, but that's going to be done today. And yeah, I love this. Yeah. There's a, there's and there's another the reason there's a sign and it shows a picture of a duck and it says head because you're, you're supposed to duck your head as you're going up the stairs because yeah. if you don't, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna, you're gonna hit this floor joist right here. I have I, I moved the stairs. The stairs was in real bad shape, so I rebuilt the stairs and uh, I, I moved them back about 14 inches. And then I built a new landing. I raised the stairs up to level them up. I put cedar handrails around them to where it's safer. Over in the loft, just close this area off because the the floor is not in the best shape out there. Yeah, and just don't no one need to be there. So. That's right. So uh, I just closed it off and I put a gate up and and uh, it's got old latches. It's got old hinges. I uh, braced the barn and off when uh, when I first came up here. You couldn't walk up here mm -hmm. with the guide wires and the braces. But it's it's the guide wires and the braces that's, which actually kept the barn from falling. Right. And uh, thank God for David and and Mr. Charles, uh, who 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 took that that part. And uh, who, who did that? And they built these X braces here also. Up here. Yeah. They, they, they built them the little truss here to, to tie it in. And, and between these and the guide wire that they put up, uh, they, they kept the barn from falling. And now we've took them all down now, but that's because we've rebraced it like a. An old barn should be braced, and we put uh, we put hog troughs up here, and then we brace it down to the poles that's coming up, and then we cross braced it here, going back to the top side of the pole, which everything locks everything else in and supports mm -hmm. it, uh, which ties it up, barn all in, it keeps it from moving. These keep it from moving this way, and all these braces here keep it from moving the other way. Well, it's a masterpiece. This is the, the original saw that they used, and they planed, I mean, they cut all this lumber with it. Now this uh, this floor right here, this part of the floor is new. And Rudd, Rudd Montgomery, he cut all this lumber for me. This was actually going to be the uh, the outside wall. All this wood here was going to be the outside wall. The more I thought about it, I couldn't put these new boards on that outside wall. Mm -hmm. It just it just wouldn't look right. So I got the weather boards for the outside wall, and then uh, I needed boards for the hallway. So I took the I took the boards out of the loft because they were painted on the underside. Right. And I used them in the hallway to where I had the, some original painted boards that was in the hallway. It's a thoughtful process that yeah. you've been through. So so I. Tell me about these railings here. Well, these are cedar railings. I just felt like the barn, it didn't have a railing in it to begin with. Yeah. I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible and try to keep uh, how how they would have built a railing mm -hmm. back when they built the barn in 1890. Nice. So 
So I came up with this idea and that's what I did. Yeah. I used it. These right here, I, I rebuilt all these. The, the, these are the posts from the ground coming up. Yes. When they built the barn, they were short. So, so they spliced it together right here. I see. And they put a bolt in, but the, the weight of the barn was kind of separating the post. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I come in and took, they, they had put some temporary bracing in here, but I took it down and I put these two by fours in here and they're true to every, all the two by fours are true two by fours. <laughs> But I put these in here and I got the, all this straightened back out to where they were bolted. And I got it all straightened back out to where it's, uh, it, it's, it's there now. Yeah. And the, the posts won't never separate. They That's was, awesome. They was coming apart. Uh, here's one that, that this is the best I could get it back together, but that's the ideal of how they were we're doing. They were they were just separating and, and mm -hmm. pushing apart. You can see it. But it was from the weight of the of the roof is that what was nine causing tons. It. Yeah, that nine tons on the roof. <laughs> when I first started, I ran a string line from from the top of the barn, from one end of the barn at the ridge cap, all the way to the other end of the barn at the ridge cap, and. Uh, in the middle, there was a 14 inch sag in the barn. Wow. That's how much the roof sagged. Now there's about a, there's still about a two, two and a half inch sag in the barn. But that was, uh, actually when I took all the, the weight off the barn, the roof actually started coming up on it. So interesting, interesting. It was like the weight had been lifted off of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and God was picking this barn <laughs> up and, and restoring it. Was it. it was heaving a sigh of relief. Here's the cables that was in. I left this one here, but there's a couple of them on the ends that I left uh -huh. here, and I left them here for a reason because this is the history That's of, right. of what saved the barn. Uh, like Charles and Dave put these in. Yeah. And, and they had them everywhere. I mean, up and down. It was hard to walk. You couldn't walk in the loft without getting clotheslined. And, and, but they're, they're what kept the barn from falling. Now, all this cedar is notched. Oh, yeah, I do want to see that. Look at that. Okay. okay, I see that. And it's notched around the poles. Kind of around on and this. all the corners. I see. But they're not, so that way it, it, it gives it extra stability for one, but it, it just makes it stronger. These poles here, they were the original poles that was on the outside wall on the right side. They were too short to put back in on the right side. Uh, when, when, I, when I jacked the barn up 14 inches. They were notched, but the notches wasn't used, and so these were, they were used on something else prior to going in this barn. Right. So these were the original poles put in the barn that were used poles to begin with. And Melissa had asked me when I took them poles down, she said she loved these poles. Aww. And she asked me, she said, Is, if there's any way you can incorporate them into the, the structure, would you? I found a use for them. And, yeah. and so I tried to incorporate them and, and, into the... It's just, a, you're a, uh, a, an economist. You, you saved all these wonderful bits and pieces. I've tried and to make good use of them. Yeah, I've tried to save everything and reuse all the wood that we could possibly use. Now, I got something to show you up, up here. Up in What's the loft. That? If you look up there, and, and Sally might have to zoom in. I am. That. I'm going to zoom in on that guy. But, uh, I was leveling the ground in the machine shop. I dug this up. It's a cast iron hoot owl, and he was about a foot deep in the machine shop. <laughs> so my wife, Nancy, she uh, 
she told me, she said, where are you going to put the owl? And I said, well, I haven't decided yet. And she said, there's only one place to put it, and that's in the top of the barn. Oh, that's, wow. where, that's where the hoot owls are. That's right. And she was absolutely right. So that's what, that's what we did. We, it's a permanent fixture. I love that. Now, this right here was uh, Martha Bachman McCoy. She was the mother. This was her, her horse stall right here. Oh, I love this. Uh, I'm gonna open this latch, yeah, and just walk in. Now all these seals, right here, all of these, these are the seals in the barn. Gotcha. Now I've rebuilt all of them. All of them have been replaced because they were all rotten. And so I had to jack the barn up and take the old ones out, put the new ones in, and then ease it back down yeah. on top of it. And then I've rebuilt the hay racks. And this was an original feed box that was in the barn. Yeah, this is the window going into the machine shop. That way the horse could stick its head out. <laughs> and, uh, Be and friendly. Air, and air, air, get good airflow too. Exactly. Too. But, but I fixed all the doors and, that, uh, and all the windows. It's beautiful. I leveled the floors up and, and uh, put down cedar shavings. Yeah, you can, it smells uh, wonderful in here from the cedar. Know, we thought about putting a new seal in here, mm -hmm. but this shows so much character. The seal here on the right. was born of a horse going in and out. Isn't that something? Now I reframed all these doors and all. And this here was Sally's stall right here. She's Miss Sally McCoy Garland. She was yeah. her daughter. Uh, she's still alive. And, and she drawed us a diagram and showed me where everything, what everything was, what all the rooms were. Wow. And, and also with the names of the horses that was in, in the barn. So we, we wanted to recreate it as much as possible. And uh, this was her daddy's horse, Pappy, Thomas A. McCoy, and his horse's name was Dandy. <laughs> and uh, likewise, I, I rebuilt all the doors. Beautiful. I reframed it. Put all new two by fours in. I put new seals in down here. Uh, we fixed this wall. This wall was off about a foot and it was leaning about to fall down. Mm -hmm. we, we repaired the wall and I, uh, like, I left it a lot of it just like it was. Yeah. I just, you know, you want to leave it, you don't want to make it look like a new one, but I rebuilt the. the but it sure is sturdy. Forced, uh, the, the feed box mm -hmm. and open the window and fixed it. And if you look up that oak flooring and you can see where it goes from the new flooring the to the old flooring. Now this right here is a whole water bucket hanger. Okay. Right. <laughs> and actually when when I first came into this stall there had been a groundhog in here. And the dirt, I'm not kidding, was piled up this high in this stall. <laughs> it was it was terrible. Anyway, I found that water hanger mm -hmm. buried under this dirt right here. I found it only fitting to hang it. And, and it was on this, it was mounted on this two by four and yeah. all. And so I just mounted the two by four on the wall just like it was. That's awesome. I'm trying to keep it original. Now all these, this is all the boards that come out of the ceiling. That was actually the floor to the to the loft. Now this beam here is the original beam that I was talking earlier yeah. about. That was uh, it's 12 foot and 3 eighths inches long, and we needed a a 12 foot and a half inch <laughs> beam. And so that, that's an original seal that was in the barn on the far outside. Anything that we could use, we tried to reuse in the barn. And then you've got some storage here. Let me see. That was Earl that just Yeah, snuck Earl by. just snuck by. 
Earl, Earl has been instrumental in organizing now, all this. this is the storage room. It's true. And uh, it's just got different things in it. Yeah. Uh, it's got old windows and it's got some old doors in it. Now here is some of the shingles. We, we saved some of them, Mr. Mr. Joe Davis. The shake shingles. To, to try to save them and they're the, they're the cedar shake shingles. We wanted to, he, he wanted to save them for for where people could paint on them and do right. different things. But, but we was able to get a good bucket full for them and a little bit more. There's Alan. No, that's uh, Larry. And Larry Roberts. <laughs> and uh, Larry's been a big help. He's been yeah. painting all the windows for me. And I tell you what, between the volunteers, it's just been awesome. Here's the old license plate I found. It was buried. I have to point this out. You've documented the um, weight yeah, yeah. of that roof right there. Yeah. yeah. Right and left side. I love that. Yeah. Thank it you. Showed how much weight, and I yeah. stuck it up there just to where it wouldn't be forgot. Well, what a wonderful tour and restoration that you've done. This is your last day here officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nancy's glad I'm coming home. I bet. Uh, it's been, uh, I started June 20th, and today is... Uh, the 9th of September. The 9th of September which I went home every weekend except one weekend. So that's two and a half months. Yeah. If I yeah, figure it. We built this barn. And, and well, we can't thank you enough, and you will be missed by many well, here. But we look forward to seeing you at the picnic. Well, that's all I wanted was a picnic. I think that's awesome. We got done. Well, you've been more than generous. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, God, God brought me to the mountain, mm -hmm. and it felt like, you know, he, he gave me the gift of restoring barns. It's for that reason I'm here, so all the glory goes to God. No. Uh, there, there is no, nobody else, uh, but, uh, but the people has brought the community here yeah. on the farm. It's amazing how many people have come together to exactly. come help. I mean, there's, it, it takes me a little bit to name everybody who's <laughs> come and helped. It's all because of God that, that it got done, and I just couldn't see not fixing it, and I sure didn't want, I hate to see barns fall. Yeah, no, it's and beautiful. And they're gone, and the history's gone, and, and it's the persuasion of, of Earl and Melissa who got me here. And, and there are no coincidences how they found me, how they got me here. Yeah, I, I couldn't have done it without Nancy. That's the bottom line. Oh. It, took, it took both of us to do it. That's awesome. Well, Slim, it's we all thing. love you and appreciate you so I much. And Nancy, too. Uh, she would send food for uh, people here that were working here and for yeah. the board and meals. And but Yeah, we, we just love the barn and, and love, love it here on the mountain. And, and uh, it's, it's just for a good, it's for a good cause. Well, we love you too. Thank you so much. Thank you.